Before we jump into things, I just want to pop on and say that today's video is sponsored by Stephen McFarland Dot Designs. Stephen McFarland Dot Designs is a website by an independent videographer and designer, Stephen McFarland, and he creates some amazing looping graphics and assets like VHS textures, glitch textures, and a lot more. Perfect for whatever you want: concert backgrounds when they return, video projects, or even a YouTube video. All throughout this video, I'll be using combinations of the VHS and CRT texture packs for the background footage I use. Everything is 4K resolution and looks amazing. I actually reached out to Steven for this sponsor because I purchased some of his packs myself because they look fantastic. So if you want some really cool assets, awesome visuals, or just a cool visual for your project, check out stevenmcfarland.design. Okay, let's get into the content, fellas. What's up, y'all? Welcome back to Red Letter Media. I'm your host, Kenny Omega. Ambient music is a genre that I feel, as of late, has exploded in popularity. In many different forms, mind you. Ambient music has crept into many facets of popular culture as of late. Whether that mean artists like Aphex Twin introducing that generation of the world to ambient music, or your mother listening to relaxing sleep music, or even extremely recently with the explosion of artists like The Caretaker. Ambient music was designed to make you feel something. Not like how hip-hop or pop make you feel something, a specific narrative throughout the lyrics. Ambient music has the adverse effect. It has no predetermined storyline. You insert your own experiences. You create the characters. You insert you. Now that's why I feel the ambient category of music is a genre that puts people into two camps. Either you enjoy the music because of the choose-your-own-adventure type nature of the sound, or you can't listen to it in the fear of you being left alone with just your thoughts being too dangerous. For those who fall into the first category, the desire to listen to ambient music can go deeper than the surface of I just like how it sounds. However, some break the mold enough to deliver an unparalleled experience where they capture a time period in its sound. Some of the artists have an idea of the emotional toll they want their music to put on the listeners, leaving it just abstract enough for you to be the main character while they direct the story. Someone who has captured this idea and crafted this concept to perfection is an artist by the name of William Basinski, and he has created one of the best era-defining pieces of music to ever be released. An album that perfectly captures life and death better than any ambient piece of music I have ever heard. A soundtrack to the deathly unknown, September 11th, 2001. The Disintegration Loops. Yeah, this is going to be a rough one. Strap in. General advisory, again, this video going forward is going to contain quite heavy subject matter, so proceed with caution from this point on. But with that said, I'm going to try my best to not make this too horribly depressing, but no promises. The Disintegration Loops is an ambient project, series of four releases by William Basinski that clocks in at over four hours. Everything from the music itself, to the album cover, to the story behind the record screams mystery and demands you learn every detail about it. I want to talk about the origins of this man, I want to talk about the origins of the music, I want to talk about the music itself, the lore behind the music, the aftermath of the music, specifically the influence it had on the genre of vaporwave, and how it's affected the world since. But before I talk to you about the monster in this video, I feel it only makes sense to explain the doctor who made it. William Basinski was born in 1958 in Houston, Texas. In the early stages of his music career, he would use physical tapes and reel-to-reels to record his music. Basinski's calling card was the art of taking a very melodic short loop of music and repeating that over and over, adding distortion and reverb, creating these otherworldly atmospheres. He would release his first official release titled Shortwave Music, being recorded in 1983, but not being officially released until 1998. This habit of recording music decades before release would be an orbital one, so keep that in mind. This would be followed by Water Music in 2000. I don't want to speak on this one too much, because... Uh, I'll just say, stay tuned on a video coming soon. <laughs> Little did Dibsinski know, the events following Water Music would change the world more than he could have ever imagined. Oh boy, where do I begin? Now the history of the disintegration loops is arguably what makes it so interesting. The meaning behind the music is what has made this album so legendary in the ambient music genre. So, the story goes, William Basinski has been making music for decades now, and he stumbled across some old tape loops that he created in the 80s, and wanted to convert them into digital files using reel-to-reel. -reel. However, there was an issue that Basinski did not factor into the equation. The tapes used were magnetic tapes, and they were comprised of long trimmed strips of plastic. And what happens when long strips of plastic are left untouched for over 20 years? It corrodes. 
If you want an in-depth look at how tape degradation works, a video titled Destruction Loops, creating sounds of decay and magnetic distortion. It's a great look inside the science of how it works, so I highly recommend checking it out if you are a man or woman of science. But Basinski knew he had to act fast because the tape was at risk of combusting at any moment. So he got to work digitally converting the files. But when he rigged up the tapes and listened to the music for the first time in over two decades, he found the sounds caused by the corrosive film to be unrecognizable from the original. His memory of the track was much different than the lo fi and cloudy audio being played back. So this gave Basinski an idea. Since the tapes were already doomed to break, he decided to let the reel-to-reel -reel run until the tapes practically disintegrated, slowly flaking off and breaking with each turn of the machine. Capturing the sound change with Basinski never touching the music at all. Each melody fell away in its own time, creating something new. But the story's just beginning. This album would go from an obscure work known only to Basinski and his close friends to capturing a moment of devastation. On the morning of September 11th, 2001, Basinski had just completed the disintegration loops, finishing just as he was disturbed by a knock on the door. A plane had struck the World Trade Center. Confused and shocked, Basinski and his friends ran to the top of his apartment complex in Brooklyn, and the news was indeed true, seeing the devastation with his own two eyes. In response, Basinski went to a neighboring apartment and borrowed a videotape, put it inside of a camera, set it up, and let it run, recording the devastation of that day, which screenshots of the video would later become all four covers of the projects. That's the footage you're watching right now, live footage from Basinski's rooftop. As it was recording, simultaneously, Basinski would grab the disintegration loops and proceed to blast it for everyone to hear. That moment in time, that exact moment in time, is what Basinski has unconsciously captured to near perfection. The feeling in the air is terror of the unknown. People didn't know how many more attacks would occur. The media was acting as a narrator to the scene of destruction laid at America's feet. And people were in a state of disbelief that this could happen, becoming a frantic mess of phone calls, yells to fellow citizens, and tears. As Basinski watched the destruction, he felt compelled to play the disintegration loops as loud as he could to the streets below, as a soundtrack to what is happening on a day nobody would ever forget. Basinski unknowingly, while watching firsthand the life and death of these citizens, had created the life and death of audio. With people looping back in their brains that horrific event and looping terrifying thoughts, Basinski would do the same with the music. Basinski personified the feel and atmosphere of that day perfectly, as if he locked it in an airtight jar. A few weeks after the event, Basinski was getting ready to release his work to the public, and he decided to dedicate these records to the victims of 9-11. Basinski himself could not have put it better when he said, The events gave new meaning to the musical pieces created by catastrophic decay in my studio a few weeks before. The disintegration loops are what could be defined as visuals personified, and since Basinski at the time was relatively unknown, this would launch him into the stratosphere of the ambient music world. When it was all said and done, the music received the praise it deserved. Pitchfork named the Disintegration Loops 1 through 4 the 30th best album of 2004 and the 196th best album of the 2000s. And in 2016, Pitchfork named it the third best ambient music album of all time. Basinski's Disintegration Loops would go to define the day, September 11, 2001. On the 10th anniversary of the attacks, the disintegration loops were performed live at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York City as a live orchestra. The album had escaped the niche ambient musical genre cage as it was put into, and became accepted by not just music listeners, but the world as an important audio experience to an unforgettable day. Okay, hopefully this is the end of the depressing topics. Hopefully. But an aspect of the aftermath not many people talk about is the effect it had on the music world. Some have drawn parallels between the works of William Basinski and the musical genre Vaporwave. A fantastic video, another one I highly recommend you watch after this video of course, was a video by Harrison Engstrong titled 9-11, The Accidental Godfather of Vaporwave. He makes some incredible points and does a great job in his own right telling the disintegration loop story, which I highly recommend giving a watch if you're still curious about this topic. Like I mentioned before, Basinski captured a feeling, captured a moment in the disintegration loops using heavy reverb and audio distortion to create the sound. An idea that Vaporwave has been paved upon, using samples of extremely old work with heavy effects and reverb to create the sound that they encapsulate. Now I wanted to get someone else's take on Basinski's influence to the genre, and since I'm no Vaporwave aficionado, I thought with my little noodle and had the idea to get one. I got the father of YouTube Vaporwave, Pat Chennington, to give his two cents on the topic. Isn't it always fun talking about where something started? What was the first thing? Who thought of the idea? and why. 
While many consider the dawn of Vaporwave to be good old Daniel Lopatin with his Echo Jams project, there are many who beg to differ and point to other albums as the catalyst in sound and aesthetics for Vaporwave. Devin Hendrix's Dreamcast Summer Songs is one that pops up constantly in discussion, coming out two years earlier than Echo Jams and still displaying this craving for the past through sound and aesthetic. Another project that comes up quite a bit in discussion of what was the first Vaporwave album is the project in focus for today's video, The Disintegration Loops. The Disintegration Loops is special when putting it in the discussion with Vaporwave. While Vaporwave constantly explores the past in a romanticized way from all things cheesy to dystopian, the Disintegration Loops were made to showcase not the past nor the future, but the exact present day in which it was made. While Dreamcast Summer Songs and Echo Jams Volume 1 clearly explore the past, the Disintegration Loops is so inherently locked in one specific place and time, and this is done so intentionally by Basinski. Many know that the completion of this album coincided with the 9-11 attacks, Basinski even going as far as dedicating the entire project to the victims of that tragic morning. I look at this project as a time capsule instead of just music. I find those crushing, bellowing, muffled howls of sound throughout the album to be William's best attempt at explaining to us how he and many other New Yorkers standing on their rooftops felt that very day. I like to think of this album as a 9-11 museum in audio form. It's one of those projects that feels so sentimental and more than just music. The only thing I really think I can compare this to um, in regards to like just a powerful project of music is, you guessed it, everywhere at the end of time. William Basinski captured one moment in time, one very specific day and the emotions it held. The unknowingness for the future, the separation from the past, it's the exact embodiment of a snapshot, a fragment in time. It's not nostalgic or haunting or anything like that to me. It's much more simple. Despite its long runtime, the disintegration loops is simply just a photo to me in audio form. An exact moment in time replicated through sound. Thank you, Pad. What a nice guy, am I right, guys? I'm a barbecue, that boy. Even with such a bare bones piece only being comprised of a synthesizer, the act of recreating this event is what gives it the emotional weight. William Basinski's cards all fell into place, all the jigsaw pieces were put together, and create a piece of music that would go down as legendary. Well, it should if it hasn't already. So I implore you to listen to William Basinski's music. The disintegration loops are available everywhere music is sold. If you aren't exactly ready for the disintegration loops but still want to listen to his music, but since he just recently released a new album called Lamentations. A new album about an hour long of really fantastic ambient work, which I was listening to as I wrote the script as a matter of fact. It's great for someone who's a bit timid of heavy ambient music works, but someone who's still very curious about the topic, so I highly recommend checking it out. His stuff is available on all platforms, so support this man. He is a true pioneer of the industry, still making music to this day. William Basinski, unknowingly, 20 years in the making, created a genre-defining and genre-defying piece of art. Sorry for this depressing one. I haven't made like a truly depressing one in a very long time, but I felt compelled to talk about it because I get enthralled with very strange music art and this was something i f needed to speak about all right i don't want to make the end too long so i'm going to try and speed run this section so it's not too long but thank you to the sponsor of today's video uh, steven mcfarland.designs if you like the footage played throughout this video and the vhs effects put into the various footages if you are dumb like me and only started editing in premiere pro like a week ago he has tutorials of how to use all the filters and effects to the highest standard possible so check out stephenmcfarland.design for some awesome video assets. Links will be in the description. And as you know, I'd like to cite my sources in this part of the video so I can get credit for the assignment. Shout out to Destruction Loops Creating Sounds of Decay and Magnetic Distortion. Great video about the actual science behind how the flaking of tapes occur. Harrison Ingstorm's video, 9-11 The Accidental Father of Vaporwave. A great video kind of depicting the same ideas and threads that I was speaking about. So check it out. Highly recommend. Uh, shout out to Pat Shannington uh, for the video Top 13 Disturbing Albums on the Internet. This was what kind of 
introduced me to William Basinski because I've heard rumblings of his name before when Pat Chennington made his video. And then recently I've been seeing his videos and recommended a lot, so I thought to jump in. And since we're on the topic of Pat, shout out to Pat for popping on this video, bro. That was so fucking epic, dude. I appreciate you. Pat, if you're watching, you're fucking epic, dude. And last shout out is a channel by the name of This Dog Ate My Vlogs for a video, a special video on William Basinski and disintegration loops. I like listening to how other people perceive music. And this video was so raw. It was just him sitting down with a camera. And I thought it gave some nice reflective points that I didn't think about. So shout out to This Dog Ate My Vlogs. And also the various interviews by William Basinski. Quick self-promo section. My new song, Get Well Soon, is out now. A, v a more vibey electronic track that I bet a lot of you would like a lot. Jake Joseph, link in bio. Music is sold everywhere it can be found. Spotify, Apple Music, SoundCloud. And for those giga chads out there, Bandcamp. My new album, Super Jail, is out March 6th, so get ready for that. The Big Fish Podcast, new episodes every Wednesday. Link to the channel and link to major streaming services in the description. Check out the Patreon for some bonus stuff. For example, you could have seen this video early to our Patreon, because I give patrons the link to new videos a couple days early. We got a bunch of other goodies there too, so link in the description as well. All the links to stuff will be in the description. Some style changes are coming to diversify the content a bit, because I got some goofy ideas I'm trying to do, so let's uh let's see how this goes last video of 2020 baby let's uh sweep this year under the rug why don't we let's just slash it from the books not on record <laughs> thank everyone so much for the growth this year it was bonkers like straight nutty i cannot be more thankful for all you goobers watching this is fucking epic for real i get more gooey and gushy on the latest episode of the big fish podcast you can watch that right now so you know what hang on i'm about to I'm about to turn on my camera Ready for the ship? Whoa, real Jake popping on, baby. It's only right that we end out 2020 with a toast. Everyone raise your nearest cup of liquid that you have to this year being retconned. Here's to 2021 and getting that fucking plaque, baby. Boom. It's mm. <sighs> awesome. It's just water, by the way. I gotta edit later. I'm not fucking insane. And I'm gonna rage. <laughs> Thank you for watching. I do appreciate it. Listen to Basinski, listen to his music. It's fucking epic, but... Yeah, that's about it. Thank you for watching, because I really fucking appreciate it. So as long as you keep your tapes from disintegrating, then uh, you're good to go. So thank you, I appreciate it, and have a pleasant day.